Hey folks, so I figured I would go over some of the uh, modifications that I've done to the Suzuki Swift since I've owned it. Um, when I got this thing, it did not run, like, at all. Um, uh, bad. It was a wiring issue. The engine actually had an okay engine, like a worn out, but ran engine. Um, so I went ahead and, uh, you know, I picked it up. I picked this car up for like 400 bucks. I have way more than that in it now. But... Um, I figured I'd go over some of the stuff I've done to it, kind of maybe, you know, help some folks out, give some folks some ideas. So, uh, first thing you'll notice here is, is that this thing does not have the, um, door mounted, um, seat belts, right? So we went ahead and took that off. Um, one of the first things that I did initially with this was I, um, picked up some convertible, um, picked up some convertible door panels and took the seat belts, the seat belt assembly completely out. And what I did is um, I actually picked up some um, seat belts from a later model uh, Metro. And at least on the two door, the 92 through 94 two doors, um, the mounting hardware for the um, pillar mounted seat belts are present. Uh, sometimes you'll have to add up top. Mine, I did not have to do this. Uh, sometimes there'll just be a blank hole there. It won't be a threaded hole, an anchored hole. Um, sometimes you'll have to add the um, um, mounting point up here. Um, but the point for inside of the um, the inside of the panel, behind the panel, that's all present, right? So you can just put the go get a seatbelt assembly out of a '95 or later uh, model. Um, and the hole for the anchor down here on the floor, at least on mine, was present. Uh, the one up here was present, so I didn't have to do anything other than just take that seat belt, plug it in there, um, attach it to the floor, anchor it up here, and attach it inside the panel. And it works. It it's, matches the, uh, the seat belts that are used on all of the years that I'm aware of uh, that will um, allow you to have a pillar-mounted seat belt instead of the awful automatic passive uh, panel or uh, panel mounted um, door ma door panel mounted seat belts from eighty nine through ninety four. Now what I did later was um, I actually came back later and took that panel that I bought and I went and I bought some corrugated cardboard or corrugated plastic board. You can get that from um, Ace. You can get that you know at a, at a hardware store. And I traced it and uh, drilled some hole, drilled the holes through it, and actually took the little trim darts, mounted it to, mounted it, you know, inside of the uh, of the holes that I drilled, and wrapped this with fabric. So it actually replaced the panel with an aftermarket one that's much stronger and uh, water resistant, right? So you'll never have to replace it because it's it's uh, got much more strength and um, it can get wet, right? So even if you take the plastic out from behind the, uh, behind the door there, it's not gonna be a big deal. Uh, wrong color, wanna get some darker ones, but um, I did pick up the, um, I did pick up the armrests from a uh, convertible as well. Um, the holes for the plastic darts behind the panel are present on all that I'm aware of, but you have to get the little plastic bits that you push through that you can then screw into uh, to make it work. But the mounting points for those are present. Uh, so I um, was able to turn this into a much cooler version uh, than, uh, you know, the, the car, than the car came with because the car just came with those awful um, pillar mounted or door, ma door mounted uh, seat belts. Um, another thing that I did is I picked up a set of esteem seats, um, from a junkyard and got some gray ones. And these are actually from the four door sedan. So they don't have the, the passenger one doesn't do the little trick where uh, it slides forward. It doesn't have the, uh, rear seat exit. Yeah, fine, whatever. Um, so I did do that. Um, these are much better seats. They're much more comfortable uh, than the standard Metro seats, Swift seats from the from the time. Uh, independent red headrest, headrest goes up and down. It's really cool. Uh, it's just for it makes for a better seating arrangement. 
Um, another thing that I did is um, I picked up from a junkyard, this is just another parts bin thing, is I picked up a split folding rear seat. And that was really handy to have. Um, a lot of people like to do a rear seat delete. I did have a rear seat delete for a very long time. I had nothing back here. It sucks, in my opinion, um, because it's very loud. Um, it, this cloth and this, and this seat act as kind of a sound deadening material and it really insulates the inside. I'm sure you can go buy, you can do your thing. Um, go buy your own stuff um, to, to insulate the sound. It's not heavy, you know, it's old 90s car parts. Um, so I just, I went ahead and, and put a, a split seat back here when I found one. I'll eventually get it recovered uh, to match the rest of the car, but the, the fabric inside, but you know, this, this is good enough for me. Um, I did also um, get the, the fabric covered um, panels uh, for the uh, rear seats. So the armrests are actually covered in a fabric. And I did that on the other side as well. These were only available, I think, in 1989. Uh, maybe other years, but I definitely know 89 and um, early 90s model or early 1990 models had this material on the panels. LSIs only, uh, not the base models. Um, from that same car, I also picked up the B and C pillar um, covers, plastic covers, and I painted them. And paint's kind of coming off, but it, it still looks okay. Um, and I picked those up off that same car, and it really makes the inside look better, in my opinion. I don't like exposed paint on an interior, and this really made a made a difference in how it looks. Uh, put a new headliner in, right? So I got a headliner off of a different car. Um, that particular uh, grip came with um, Suzuki Swifts, so I just used that one again. Um, another interior thing that you can pick up if you can find one is the uh, trunk release neat little feature you pull that up you don't have to use the key to open the the back door you can use the uh, the uh, remote release here I think there was also a gas door op release as well some years um, I've never seen the need I mean it just just pull it open and you know whatever um, picked up a GTI wheel I can't remember where this wheel came from but I did pick up a wheel uh, from a uh, uh, another country, um, and it's much better. It's thicker than the original wheel. It's not. It's soft plastic. It's easier to grip. Uh, horn and all that still works. Um, one other thing that I did, which was just a personal preference of mine, was I picked up a GT um, combination switch, and it's hard to get this in the frame here, but uh, a GT combination switch assembly that uh, included the intermittent wiper switch. Um, and it has these little boots, and I just thought that looked cool. I also had to replace this bit in order to um, make that work. Cluster from a um, later model. Um, so when you turn this thing on, it actually has the service engine soon light in amber instead of the red check engine light. With a tack, um, upgraded all of these to LED. Uh, excuse the beeping. Uh, all of those have LEDs, um, uh, all the lights behind there, including all of the indicator lights. Um, makes it much easier to read. It doesn't hurt your eyes. And a cool thing is, is that it actually adjusts with the dimmer switch, these particular bulbs. Um, so you can use that. Also went ahead and did the same thing over here. Put in a, an LED behind that. Um, it looks white in this image for whatever reason. It's actually green like it should be. Upgraded the radio. I picked up a new shift um, uh, shift handle, um, shift lever, um, just because the old one was a piece of junk. Uh, this entire dashboard's been painted. Painting came out really well. Um, the original vents were black, so I just kept those black and painted it dark gray. Uh, paint came out really good. It's okay in terms of strength. It's not great. It's not awful. Um, you know, we talked about the uh, rear door. One thing that I've done here is uh, I used the carpet. I'm going to pull back and see. I used the carpet to trace, um, and I picked up some the sound editing material out of a junkyard car as well. Um, but I used the carpet to make a cut a piece of wood. This is much stronger than the um, 
the original particle board material that they used to um, make the original trunk floor on these. Uh, it's just terrible. Uh, it gets wet one time and it sucks after that. Uh, this, you can put some stuff on top of. Uh, took out my rear um, seat belts. I'm sure that's illegal. I don't care. I don't ever carry back seat passengers. There's no reason for me to have rear seat, um, seat belts. Um, this thing will never carry more than two people. Um, let's see what else. Oh, um, I did some, so none of the stuff that's on this car came with this car. Uh, everything on this, including this dashboard came out of donor cars. When I got this car, the dashboard was in shambles, had holes all in it, was just awful. Um, so I went ahead and got a junkyard dashboard, went ahead and put all that back together. That center panel, that center bezel, believe it or not, is the original bezel for this car. How that one piece out of all of the nonsense that broke on this thing managed to survive, I don't know. But we'll have that. Um, had to replace the uh, slider, the climate control um, assembly here, um, the uh, mode selector. Uh, this thing would not go back to home, uh, so you could never get it to blow straight out of the vents. It would always want to blow on your feet. Uh, that thing goes bad after a while, and you have to replace it. Um, if it, uh, if the clips pop out of the assembly, which in this one it did, uh, also got new vents. I ordered those on eBay. These, you know, are perfect. They work. Um, what else did we do? Oh, L full LED conversion. And this is one of the more functional things that I've done to this car is, uh, LEDs are just so much better in every single way. Um, excuse the beeping, but... You know, you'll have your LEDs. They're much higher visibility. You can see, be seen far away. Um, it really is worth the conversion. Um, I also upgraded the blinkers on this car to have LEDs. And uh, what I did to make the, these actually work correctly, like they don't fast blink. Um, and the way that I did that was, is I got an adjustable on Amazon, an adjustable um, blinker relay. And that thing will actually allow you to select um, the speed at which the lights blink. And that's really handy. So another uh, cool thing that I did is, is I added um, interior lighting, uh, ignore my ugly wiring harness, uh, to the footwells. And uh, this was just an Amazon kit. And it's really cool because you can use an app to uh, control the... Um, flashing the speed at which they flash the color. I can change this remotely to any color I want it to be. Uh, right now I just have it set to green because it matches the uh, rest of the interior. Uh, but that was a really cool um, a really cool upgrade that I did. Um, made it, you know, just a little touch of my own. Uh, another thing that I did is um, full LED um, conversion on the front uh, headlights. Um, these were plug and play. They work really well. Uh, they do not blind people. I got a lot of uh, comments when I showed this on the uh, some Facebook group that, uh, oh, you're gonna have people all up, you know, in your shit because they uh, huh, um, they're gonna be blinded and they're gonna be flashing you and blah 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 blah. Nah, not really. Uh, that does not happen. And uh, another um, upgrade, obviously, you can see here, this is a 92, and I painted the engine bay, and I did that because the car will ultimately be yellow, but this is kind of a, you know, very much a work in progress. This is not a 92 engine. This is actually a 96 1.3 liter engine, um, and that was probably the most complex conversion that I've done, um, and the reason why I did that was simply because um, it was really hard to get 92 parts, uh, so 96 um, parts are much easier to get. Um, I've found several in junkyards that I've picked up, you know, additional rocker arms and things like that. I know the rocker arms on this thing suck. I uh, got an extra camshaft. I actually have a whole head that I bought. Um, so I have spare parts for it, and that was much easier to get than anything for the 92 four-cylinder. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. Um, I brought everything electronic over from that 96. Uh, it was a 96 sedan, and I brought over the entire wiring harness. Uh, I brought over everything. You can see that's a 96 relay box, 96 battery. Um, anything electronic for this car is a 96. And um, I found that to be much easier to deal with than um, trying to make, you know, hybrid a 92 and a 96. Um, and I found that to be, you know, just much easier to deal with. Um, I did do a R134A system on this. You, 
can't really tell by looking at it, but this is a, a 96 um, air conditioning system. It works. Um, did the timing belt cover delete, um, but uh, did a, uh, a full conversion to an R134A system. Yes, I know it's not as good as an R12 system, but again, I can get R134A for really, really cheap at AutoZone, and that is the reason why I like it. Um, did have to make a penetration into the, I can't really see in the light, but penetration through to the passenger side um, firewall in order to keep um, the, uh, or to get that wiring harness through. Uh, another upgrade that I did um, is a starter relay. Um, you can buy these on pretty much any you know, Suzuki website. Um, this prevents that click no start situation when you have no other starting system malfunctions. Um, I don't exactly understand the science behind it, but I know it worked for me. Um, it's a four wire relay setup. Two of the wires go to the starter. Um, one of the wires goes to the positive side of the uh, power system for the car, the main, the main um, connection for power after the uh, pr first primary relay. And then the black wire goes to a ground. I uh, just had to use an existing hole there underneath where the uh, coil mounts. Car fires up every single time now, 100% start rate versus you know having to turn that key five or six times to get it to start prior. Um, had to do some vacuum modification, vacuum hose modification. You can see one right here. You know, I had to join some hoses together. Everything on this thing works. Um, as far as engine modifications, that's about it. Um, have pulled this engine out a couple of times, uh, resealed everything, resealed the, resealed the oil pan, new clutch, uh, new rear main seal, uh, new timing belt about, I don't know, 500 miles ago, new water pump, uh, new uh, crank seal, cam seal, new oil pump seal, which that was a real pain to get off, the, the remnants of the old oil pump seal. Um, when I bought this thing, the dipstick, whoever owned it before me, they used silicone to seal the dipstick uh, tube, put the proper O-ring on that, put an O-ring on the distributor, um, put a penetration through where this wiring is for the uh, clutch start switch. This is actually an automatic wiring harness. This is an automatic engine, or, I'm sorry, an automatic car that this engine came out of. I used its wiring harness and just spliced in the... Uh, needed connections for manual transmission components. Obviously the, uh, you know, anybody in the know knows that speed sensor for the manual transmission is actually on the cluster. Uh, wired that in straight over to the ECU, which is underneath the climate control box in the cabin. Um, clutch start switch is, is routed here and that goes straight to the old automatic wiring harness. You can't really see it, it's down there. Um, fully functional, you have to press the clutch to start the car, I like that, I like things to be original and factory, you know, functional. Um, had to splice in the windshield wiper connector there, that is, in the, origin that is the original 92 um, windshield wiper motor with the 96 re uh, wiring harness, uh, so you do have to splice that in, the connector is different. Uh, connectors all around the car were actually different, in 95 or 96, whatever one of those years they did, they, they changed the um, wiring connectors. Uh, slightly um, and not everything interchanged. Um, that's about it as far as modifications go for this thing. It is highly customized. Like I said, I will paint it yellow uh, to match the engine bay. Um, two or three different things that I've done. I need to get a new one of these. This thing sucks. Um, I actually did get one on this side uh, replaced. Uh, this one's in much better shape though it is used. It's not perfect. Um, I do have the bendy mirrors. This was the Suzuki version of the mirror. These are really cool. Um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else I've done to it. I know I've done a lot. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. Um, that's in addition to all of the parts that are underneath here that have been replaced. Uh, brand new front end, tie rods, lower control arms, um, sway bar links. Uh, this one, this is Swift, did come with a sway bar, so sway bar links and bushings. Um, front bearings. Complete new braking system, discs, um, rotors, drums, uh, shoes, all of the standard maintenance stuff. Um, all that stuff is new. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a trek. But this thing does drive down the road. I've driven it from Florida to Arizona, and I plan on driving it back to Florida at least one more time in its life. Um, so I have no, I have zero question in uh, in this thing's ability to carry me across the country and back.
so yeah, thanks for scoping out my ride with me, scoping out my Swift. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of labor in this thing, a lot of hours, a lot of blood, sweat, tears, a lot of money. Um, but it's a good little car. It drives me down the road. Um, I appreciated it, and I think it appreciates me. So thanks for watching.